I was coming out of a divorce, dealing with child custody, uh, being on my own. I quit my job. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. You got a good fight, man. You got uh, this Brazilian, Alessandro Costa, 12-3 and record, 27 years old, a young buck. You know what I mean? Second fight in the UFC. What are your thoughts on him and, and that fighting style that he possesses? Man, he to me, he's a stocky Brazilian pit bull. I mean, that's what I try to tell people. I mean, he throws with power. He comes forward. Uh, good jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, well-rounded. First fight in the UFC was the number eight guy in the world, uh, Amir Abazi. I mean, he fought on the Tuesday night contender, had a decision win uh, over a guy that was 12-0, and 0, you know, didn't get the contract, uh, then went and knocked somebody out in like 15 seconds, got the opportunity to step up on short notice. So I know he's a dog, you know, he's 0-1 in the UFC coming off of a loss. I'm 1-1 in the UFC coming off of a loss. Neither one of us has never lost back-to-back. So I can promise you this fight is going to be a war. Definitely. And uh, yeah, man, when you look at the the performances that he's had in the last couple of fights, I think you can look at the contender series fight and know more about him. What did you learn from that fight? Uh, I learned a lot, man. And uh, mainly is how he throws his combos. Uh, and, you know, he's like a Leonard Garcia of the 125 pound division. You know, he never stops throwing power, uh, even when he's tired. You know, so the game plan is to be fast, to be quick, move a lot, touch, and don't be where he thinks I'm going to be. Um, I think he's great, well-rounded. Uh, I think wrestling probably is his weakness, uh, mainly in the later rounds. He starts off strong, good takedown defense. He sprawls, he brawls, he scrambles. Um, I think it's a great matchup, man. I think we're going to see two flyweights run into each other and go full speed. Yeah, even though um he's he's a bruiser and he likes to throw hard, you know, what I mean, he has more submissions than he does knockouts in his record. Um, what what about the ground game, man? What do you see? You know, what I mean, everybody thinks if you're Brazilian, you automatically have a belt, black belt. You know, what I mean. <laughs> hey, uh, he is the only other guy that I've ever fought that has a flying submission on his record. Yeah. So uh, I'm pretty sure he probably is one of the legit black belts. Uh, he trains out of a good gym. Uh, from my understanding, actually, he's training down in Mexico City uh, with that guy that just fought and made a heck of a debut, even though he lost to that Russian, uh, Diego something, you know. Um, Diego Lopez, I think that's his name. Yes. And I believe that's his jiu-jitsu coach. Um, so I was like, okay, cool, you know. So he comes out of a great camp, you know, great gym. He's going to have some good people in his corner and – I mean, they like said it's the UFC. I mean, we ain't getting no easy fights no more. It doesn't matter, you know. And if you look up my combined record, my combined record is like 173 wins and uh, I think like 68 losses. So uh, I don't fight chumps. I've never really fought chumps besides early in my career. And uh, as soon as the UFC offers anybody, the, the answer is always yes and win. There you go. There you go, man. You returned in your last fight against Charles Johnson. You were supposed to fight uh, Jeff Molina. And when you look back at that fight, you know, what can you say about the performance? Man, I just, without trying to make up a bunch of excuses and trying to, you know, say this and that, man, just, that wasn't me. You know, I had a lot of stuff mentally, physically, and emotionally. I was coming out of a divorce, dealing with child custody, uh, being on my own. I quit my job, had an opponent change, supposed to fight the number 13th guy in the world, turn around and got offered I offered a Brazilian. I said yes to him. He turned it down. They offered me Charles. I said yes. And then they offered me another guy. I said yes. And then they said, well, who do you prefer? And I said, well, Charles has got a bigger name, so let's go Charles. You know, I felt like I was in a position no matter what. I had to show up and fight. A fight before that, I retired, uh, you know, gave it up for a few years. So I didn't want to come back, get booked to fight, get an opponent change, and then just, you know, try to find a way out of it. There was no way out of it. You know, they were showing up and fighting, and that's what I did. Uh, even though I didn't do it to my full ability, I will come June 4th or June 17th. I've done everything in this camp. We've, uh, you know, uh, 
broke down certain things that we know that we need to do and what we look forward to doing in this fight. And I just need to go out there and perform and show everybody the real Jimmy the Brick Flick. Man, there was a lot going on before that fight. I didn't realize, you know, all the stuff that was going on in your life, man. People don't real people don't, you know, put too much weight on that, but there's a lot of weight on a fighter's shoulders if they have stuff going on outside the cage, right? When they enter it, it's it's hard to sometimes it's hard to separate it, right? Oh yeah. There was no separating it, you know. Nothing was really in final, you know, till closer to the fight. And then it just, it was difficult, you know, um, last year, father's day weekend was when my wife left me, you know, and then a month later I'm called by the UFC and they heard that I was interested in coming back and, you know, and I say, yes. And next thing I know I'm in Yasada. Next thing I know I'm fighting the number 13 guy in the world. And then, you know, still dealing with everything I'm dealing with and just now getting back into the gym and, I wanted everything to happen so fast and so quick because I was gone for so long. And kind of now I'm like, yeah, I probably could have waited a little longer. But, you know, you live and you learn. And, you know, June 17th, just come back and show everybody really what I'm made of. Yeah, man. Um, we, we're seeing uh, Tim Elliott kind of go through that right now. Have, have, you, have you been following that? Him and, and his divorce and how, like, public it has been? Because his... His ex-wife is actually a fighter, so it's kind of a different situation. Yeah, man, that's tough mentally, physically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how Elliot's dealing with that. You know, he had kids by this, or yeah, I think they had kids, or you know, he had kids before, or whatever. Basically, mm -hmm. you know, you see the picture where she's talking to his daughter at the wedding, you know, and then there's Coom right there, or Croom, or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. dude, like. Yeah, I'm I'm glad at my last fight I watched him get knocked out, dude, by my boy uh uh Adrian Yanez, you know. I think that's mm -hmm. who Adrian Yanez knocked out. No, no, Adrian fought that other guy from the shield cage. Uh yeah. but yeah, man, so that that was crazy, man. And then that sucks for Tim Elliott. So I'm excited to see how he does tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to fight Tim Elliott. I I would never bring up that drama, you know. Me and him has already kinda had our own little thing, but you know, like I would love for that, but I hope the best for him tomorrow or Saturday when he performs. No doubt, man. Um, Forza Combat Sports is that is that still the main spot, man? Where you're doing all of your training? Yes, sir. That's where I train. I, I'm at Forza Combat Sports in Broken Arrow. Uh, that's where we do all of our MMA, my stand up, my Muay Thai. I have a jujitsu gym now where I go and get jujitsu in. I train at Ryan BJJ for my jujitsu. And I do CrossFit three times a week over at CrossFit Sand Springs. So I'm all over the place. I, I do this full time now. So I, I train four to five times a day, five, six days a week. You just mentioned a couple other spots. Is that Are those places the places that you just added since your last fight? Uh, Ryan BJJ is the only one I added. Um, I've been at CrossFit Sand Springs for quite a few years now. It was just CrossFit and Forza. And then now it's CrossFit. Ryan BJJ and Forza with, you know, the, I noticed that you have like a tremendous amount of support and sponsors that are behind you. And it's pretty incredible, man. How do you do it? And I started from nothing, you know, just promoting. And a lot of these guys, don't realize social media, yeah. and we got Instagram, we got Facebook. I got a page on my Facebook as well. I got Twitter, I got TikTok, and, and I mean, there's even more, platforms out there and man i was at one point in my career i had like 25 sponsors from 150 dollars up to like five six hundred dollars now my sponsorship is fifteen hundred dollars flat and per fight and i have about i have 14 sponsors but not all of them pay me you know some of them are my gyms and then uh some like i have a barber you know his price is a little cheaper but he cuts my hair for free and I can go get a haircut every two to three weeks, no problem. Um, but it just took a lot of building. Man. Shout out, sponsor blast, put myself some merchandise, I'm putting logos on the back, and pretty sold over 500 pieces of merchandise. I came out with my own hat and just promote them constantly on social media, man. And you promote on social media, it's free advertisement. They keep seeing their name and. I got a big following, so it helps out a lot. And if it wasn't for my sponsors and everybody that helped me and supported me, I wouldn't be able to do this full time now.
Yeah, man. If you could give like any like maybe a secret to the sauce, you know what I mean, for, for young guys, because it seems like even guys in the UFC, they're having a hard time finding sponsors. Man, it's just you, you got to stay active on promote on social media. That's really it, you know, especially when they have a business page. So easy to just to tag their page and stuff or post up training and say thank you or uh, like like if you have merchandise, give me merchandise hats when, I, when I'm doing uh, interviews, when I'm uh, going live on my Facebook, I can wear it and just promote them at every aspect possible. And I'm always giving sponsor blasts, sponsor shout outs and just making them know that I, I appreciate them as much as they appreciate me. For sure. For sure, man. I'm, I'm happy to see it, man. I'm happy to see it. And, and hopefully, you know, some fighters, if they're watching this, they take that advice because, man, it just sucks that, that you see sometimes on social media that fighters are asking for sponsors on social media when there should be sponsor, you know, sponsors should be asking them to be on social media. It's kind of weird, man. But uh, anyway, yeah, so, ben, man, it ben seems like money but it's not a lot you know i get way more in sponsorship on my own than what venom gives me yeah <laughs> yeah for sure um with the with uh you know the preparations man you send you're training like five times a day is is uh is is do you have like a new lease on on like your fighting career right now is does it feel different from like like say when you debuted because you had an incredible debut yeah, man, it, it, it's a big difference now being able to train and relax instead of being at work after training. I used to have to train, go to work, train after work, you know, deal with the kids, deal with the wife and, you know, live that everyday life. And uh, now it's a little better. I'm able to when I say train four or five times a day, like a CrossFit workout that, you know, that's an hour session. That's a workout. When I go run, I consider that my workout. Uh when I go and do a jiu-jitsu session on Monday and Wednesday, by 12 o'clock, I got three sessions in. I Because I do CrossFit in the morning, I run, and then I do jiu-jitsu all before lunchtime. But then after lunch, I have lunch. I chill for four or five hours, and then I'm back at the gym later at night for, you know, sometimes it's two hours, sometimes it's three hours based on the days, you know. Some days are lighter, some days are harder, and Monday and Wednesdays are my hard, brutal days. Um, where I'm putting in uh, eight, nine hour days in the gym and have late nights. But then on Tuesdays and Thursday, I have my more chill days, but still get good workouts in. And uh, it just manages it a lot better. And now I'm, I'm fighting for my job, man. I'm fighting to keep a contract. I got two fights left on my contract. As you see, like we don't always get to finish our contracts, you know, if I go out here and I don't perform June 17th, I could be cut. You know, I could lose my job. So now I'm fighting for my job. I'm fighting to keep the job. I'm fighting for the UFC to re-sign me, to give me my fourth fight as well. You know, so I got to perform June 17th. Damn, man. That's a that's a different mentality right there, man, from uh, from debuting in the UFC. You know, incredible, incredible. Um, One last thing, man, before I let you go. I just wanted to pick your brain about the title fight, the flyweight title fight coming up. You know, um, you got uh, Pantoja who has beaten the champ twice and he's coming back for the third one. But this is for all the marbles, man, against uh, Brendan Moreno. What do you see in this one? You know, is there a mental edge to beating somebody twice? I think so, man. I, I, I think so. I think it's hard. But not only did he beat him, it's not like he finished him both times. It's not like he got a knockout and then a submission. He beat them both times by decision, you know. He didn't finish Brandon. The first time when they fought on the Ultimate Fighter, it was only two rounds, though. And then, I believe, I don't know if they did a third, um, but then when they fought in the UFC, it was a three-round, you know. And that was when Brandon got cut and Brandon's came back. So it's a totally different Brandon. But then again, mentally, I feel like Pantoja's got his number, man. I don't think Pantoja's worried. I think Pantoja feels like this is his opportunity. He's had a few opportunities slide by, but this guy has been in the top five flyweight for like five years. I mean, I swear, since he's entered the flyweight division off of the ultimate fighter, he's the only guy that has been that high of rank, you know? And Tim Elliott was on that show with him and Brandon Morono and so many other fighters. And he's the only one that's still right there at the top off of that show. 
man, the flyweight division, it's crazy right now. Like people don't like just a few years ago, like they were talking about cutting it out and all of that. It's like, it's, it's insane that we're, we're in this position like you, you know I mean? You're like right at the, like right at the edge of the top 15, you know, like a lot of other guys and you could go in there and mix it up with the top 15 as well. You got the skill set to do it. You know I mean? It's, it's a uh, fun times, man. Looking forward to man, seeing you perform on June 17th, man, in Vegas. Uh, we'll get to see the real version, you know what I mean, of, of uh, the brick. Thank you so much, man, for the time. Hey, man, thank you. I appreciate it. I can't wait to show everybody what I've been working on to prove the real Jimmy the Brick Flea. Shout out to all my sponsors for the support. Harvest Hell, Skate Skate Marine, uh, The Parlor Hair and Ink, Tulsa Sport Acupuncture, Ryan Jiu-Jitsu, Forza Combat Sports, CrossFit Sandspring, HKA USA, Inkwell Printing, Palmer Law, Industrial Motor Services, International Crematory Services. I told him I'm going to send him a body. Broadway Barbershop uh, and Minuteman Plumbing for all the support. And Taylor uh, from uh, Taylor. Uh, she's a uh, realtor with Cohen and somebody Cohen Realtor. So shout out to all my sponsors for the support. I'm going to make you all proud June 17th.